Hello again, I am Blunty, and today I've got something pretty sweet to show you. A way to massively boost the performance of Cyberpunk 2077 on the ROG Ally, and in fact, literally any and every PC, in a way that's never been possible before now. I've made a small fistful of videos about Cyberpunk 77 on the ROG Ally, amongst other things, over the last year or so, being quite enthusiastic about both things. I used it in my original performance testing, and after realizing the GPU architecture included a small fistful of the special cores needed, I made it playable with ray tracing turned on. I retested it again when update 2.0 hit us and nailed down some ideal settings and performance profiles for that. Back in December, CD Projekt Red confirmed that patch 2.1 would indeed be the final major patch, and this week broke news that there's now basically no one at CD Projekt Red working on the game at all anymore, with everyone now moving over for an all-hands-on-deck for the next Witcher game. So from here on in, we can consider Cyberpunk locked down, done, finito, feature complete, and as bug-free as it will ever be. Good news for modders and modding, because that means nothing should ever break mods from here on in. Touch wood. And it was that thought that brought me to Nexus Mods to see what the modding community has been up to recently, because it's been a while since I checked in. And that exploration lighted my eyes on a newly released mod that does something no other mod of its kind has managed yet. FSR 3 frame generation for Cyberpunk 2077, and it does pretty much what it says it does. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, a few of you might already be furiously typing out, actually, Blunty, actually, there was already a mod to enable FSR 3 frame gen in Cyberpunk. It's been out for ages. And you're right, there was. Trouble is, that mod, rather frustratingly, only made FSR 3 work on NVIDIA's GPUs, which, even though FSR 3 is supposed to work completely brand agnostic, that's one of the best things about the damn thing, it made it quite a lot less than useful, especially for AMD devices like the ROG Ally. This version of the idea, however, this mod, adds FSR 3 frame generation in a similar way to the older mod by replacing DLSS frame gen under the hood and adds more upscaling options to the game, but now it works with all main GPU vendors, NVIDIA and AMD, and even Intel for the 14 people out there who are using Arc GPUs for some reason. And what's more, it has been tested to work and be fully compatible with all the major mod uh, underpinnings and dependencies, so it shouldn't interfere with any other mod you want to be using. Not CET, not Red Free XT, not Reshade. And among the list of supported GPUs is the AMG RX 7000 series and the GPU built into the APU driving the ROG Ally and other similar devices just so happens to be based on the same RDNA 3 architectures as the 7000 series cards. All of that is to say, now we can use FSR 3 frame generation where it's actually most useful. On the ever-growing range of AMD-powered handheld gaming PCs or whatever other limited power gaming rig you like. Installation is very easy. It's a matter of dragging and dropping a single folder of files right into the game directory, and then running a little script that edits your registry to stop it doing a check for NVIDIA GPU hardware presence. That's so the game doesn't gray out the menu item for frame gen if you're not running NVIDIA. And you'll notice that my menu does still say DLSS frame generation. And if that bothers you, there is another mod that changes the menu text to say AMD FSR 3.0 frame gen or whatever. But just know that it's just a cosmetic difference. This setting does indeed now turn on FSR 3 frame gen under the hood, despite what it says in the text. So let's actually see the effects, shall we? Firstly, here is the game in its unmodded state using my standard settings, with one exception we'll get to. But these settings are designed to target 40 FPS, which I consider to be the sweet spot for performance balancing here. You get to keep the game looking decent, and the feel of 40 FPS over 30 is pretty significant in this game. So while we can't quite get to 60 FPS without too many visual compromises that I don't like, 40 FPS is a really nice sweet spot to make the game practical. Now, the only change I made from my standard version, my, my standard 2.0 recommendations for settings and whatnot, is I've moved up from 900p to 1080p. 
as for some reason my capture card was being a bit fussy and pissy with 900p when I was recording this stuff. It's normally fine with it, I've done it many times before, but for whatever reason it just, it just got fussy. I couldn't be arsed fiddling with it, so I just popped up to 1080p. So the unmodded framerate results you're looking at here are a little lower than I would normally use, but since we're only really looking at the difference between unmodded and modded, that's perfectly fine and still very, very useful. So, with all of that said and set up and out of the way, here's how the game performs with the mod installed and FSR 3.0 active. And well, as you can see, a significant uplift. And now we can hit 60 FPS with ease. In fact, the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed. I'm not even in the full power turbo mode anymore, am I? I'm now running with the Sweet Spot 18 Watt Custom Power Mode that's become so popular among ROG Ally users for its better efficiency, cooler operation, and noticeably quieter fans. So now I can reach 60 FPS and turn down the power requirements for a pretty ideal situation. But here's where we need to talk about the imperfections, the downside. FSR 3.0 isn't really recommended for lower frame rates. It's mainly pushed and advertised and, and sort of talked about in the press releases and whatnot as a way to make games that already run at or at least near 60 FPS feel even slicker. And this is mainly because at lower frame rates, the artifacting becomes more obvious. FSR 3.0 is not quite as clever as Nvidia's version of the frame gen technology. So I can show you what I'm talking about if I slow down playback. You can see the ghosting around, in particular, high contrast moving objects. That is the artifacting we're talking about here. That said, at full speed, in the heat of the game, it's a lot less obvious unless you're looking for it. Unfortunately, you'll also spot it on some of the UI stuff, which is a little more bothersome, but on balance, the extra smoothness it adds to the overall feel of the game may well be worth it. Your mileage may vary depending on how sensitive you are to it, of course. I found it not to be a problem for me, which, considering how much I hate motion blur in games, was kind of a surprise, because this does effectively present as a kind of crunchy motion blur. But it is effectively only sort of one frame of blur, which I think helps me cope with it, where I otherwise would be annoyed. Weird thing is though, I don't know what you're watching this video on, but on the 7 inch 1080p screen of the Ally, a lot of this is significantly harder to notice. Much like 900p or 720p modes in games that need the extra room, as I often say, the superb screen and its size do combine to hide a lot of the crimes. It is, of course, a compromise doing this, but it's one I'm happy to make, not just for the smoother feel, but also the ability to drop to lower power modes and maintain performance, meaning an overall cooler and quieter experience, and if I'm untethered from power or supplementing with a battery backup while traveling or whatever, a longer playtime. And while I haven't tested it yet, as I wanted to keep this video a lot more focused on just a singular mod, there is another mod which does promise to reduce or eliminate the ghosting effect of FSR 3 in this game. So, for those of you it does bother too much, you can take a look at that other mod and see if it helps. Yeah, I'll be keeping this mod active on my Cyberpunk install on my ROG Ally. It's nice to have the option, and of course that's what it is, it's an option. It doesn't permanently change the game, it just makes the existing menu option useful on non-NVIDIA systems. Oh, and there is a Linux compatible version of the mod too. So if you are out there with a Steam Deck, let me know if you install this and try it out. Let me know how you get on. Yeah, hopefully you found this interesting and or useful. I am Blunty, thank you as always to the patrons scrolling away up above there. And uh, I will catch you next time. <laughs>